Hi, I'm Shane Vandevreed, pastor at First Baptist Church in Stanton, Michigan. Welcome to Bible Bites. In this video, I want to share with you that God cares. Have you ever felt in your life like you are hurting and you reach out to someone to share uh, what your troubles are? but it doesn't feel like they want to take the time to listen? Do you ever feel like sometimes you're suffering and you are collapsing under unbearable trouble and you reach out for someone to help, but it seems like everybody's too busy or unwilling to lift even a finger to help? Well, my friend, we all have been in that boat. We've all faced that kind of a situation where it doesn't seem like anybody cares. But I'm here to tell you that God says definitively, unequivocally, that he cares. One only needs to take a look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, uh, to see this, where he says, Therefore, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. What a terrific promise that is, but it's more than just a promise. It is a formula for how we are to live and what our attitude should be. See, no matter what, difficulty is going on in our life right at the moment, part of the problem that is causing us all of this anxiety and these feelings that nobody cares, that we're just being ignored by everyone, and that there's just all of this injustice that's going on, it's partly because of our attitude. It's partly because of our perspective. And what we need to do is reframe things to see it differently. That's why First Peter uh, tells us there in 5 verse 6, he says, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Sometimes we go around trying to act like God, uh, trying to shape things or uh, ensure or force things to be the way we want them and in the time frame that we want them. But we are to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you at the proper time. So if we can change our perspective, reframe it so that we see things differently, see God for who he is, see ourselves for who we are as uh, loyal servants, as just family members uh, in God's family, then we begin to see ourselves properly. And then any anxiety, whatever it is, whether it's a physical uh, issue, whether it's a mental issue, whether it's a relational issue, whether it's a spiritual issue, whatever is causing us anxiety, we just cast it on him because he cares for you. What a wonderful promise. So whatever it is that's causing us trouble, we need to let it go. We need to cast it, you know, get rid of it, lay it down at the foot of the cross. God can handle it. He will bear up under that load because he cares for us. All we need to do is keep trusting in him correctly with the right attitude. We need to humble ourselves and wait for his proper timing. Now that isn't the main passage that I want to refer to. I want to take a look at Lamentations chapter 3. We're going to be looking at verses 19 through 26 uh, and we're going to take a look at them um, three or two verses at a time. The first set I want to take take a look at, is verses 19 through 21. Listen to this. 
Remember my affliction and my wandering, the wormwood and bitterness. Surely my soul remembers and is bowed down within me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Seems a little confusing at first. Let me help uh, clear it up. Uh, any, any misunderstanding here or any of the confusion. Now, it, this is a person who is reaching out to God and sharing the difficult situation that they're going through at the moment. They are filled with trouble, filled with anxiety. You know, it starts out by saying, God, remember my affliction from times past. Remember my affliction and my wandering when I didn't know where I was going and I didn't know where I was at. I was lost and wandering and it felt like my whole life was wormwood and bitterness. God, I know you remember. Surely my own soul remembers those times when I felt like that. And as I remember them, uh, it, it brings back vividly those feelings and it bows me down. But then that is the very reason why I have hope. Now that's the part that kind of seems strange, but when we look back at the difficult times of our life and we realize that we are no longer in those difficult times, that's when we can have hope that no trouble is going to last forever. And that trouble that we had, it might not have been solved the way we wanted. It may not have been solved uh, as quickly as we wanted, but it was taken care of. It's no longer an issue anymore. It's only when you take the time to remember it that you realize the vividness uh, of those emotions that you felt and it bows you down, it weighs you down as you're thinking and remembering how you felt at that time. But it is in that exercise, practicing that remembrance, that gives you hope for the trouble that you're currently in. Because God will lead us through. Now let's take a look at the next two verses, verses 22 and 23. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Again, what a marvelous promise to us who believe and love and follow the Lord God Almighty. This reminds us that God's loving kindness all of his loving kindnesses, that's plural, meaning there are many ways in which God shows his love for us. And he says they never cease. His loving kindnesses for you never cease. They're always there. They're always coming. And then he says his compassions, like like First Peter, because he cares for you, we can cast all of our anxieties on him because he cares for you. Here in verse 22, it says, his compassions, that's, that's, it feels like it even goes further beyond caring, his compassion, meaning God feels and is moved emotionally by your own suffering. His compassions never fail. Wow, that's just tremendous. Now think back again how I started out asking, do you ever feel like no one cares? Well, God cares. He has abundant compassion. They never cease and they never fail. Marvelous. Then in verse 23, it says that these uh, loving kindnesses, God's compassion, it's new. It's fresh each and every morning. Now, I like the fact that um, this verse tells us two things. One is that it happens each and every day. There's never a day where 
God says, I'm on vacation, or I've got other things I need to do, he's always there. So not only do they never cease, but they are there every day. But when it also says that they are new every morning, this is kind of key. This is the beginning of what we're going to see even a little further down in this passage. In the morning, when you first wake up, before you have a chance to think anything, to say anything, or to do anything, as my dad likes to say, uh, getting up uh, before breakfast, you know, getting up before the rooster crows, that before you have a chance to do anything, God is already there on the scene. It's not based on uh, who you are. It's not based on what you say. It's not based on what you do. God's loving kindnesses and his compassions are there for you before you can do anything. It's all based on him. It's all about God. It's not about us. He is there faithfully even when we are unfaithful. And then uh, just a, a, a statement of praise. Great is your faithfulness is how verse 23 ends. God is always faithful in a great and major way never ceasing, never failing. Okay, now let's take a look at uh, verse 24 here, which says, The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him. Now, what does this mean, the Lord is my portion? Well, let's talk in terms of uh, an inheritance, when your grandparents or your rich uncle or your parents uh, pass away and uh, all of their possessions are bequeathed, they are set aside in an inheritance and they go to you. Uh, let's say that there are multiple siblings and so the inheritance is split among a number of people. <clears throat> well, your portion of that treasure of that inheritance of, of what you're hoping for to help you on into the future, your portion is that fraction or piece of the pie. Some goes to others, but there's this piece that is set aside just for you. That's your portion. It's like taking a pie and splitting it up into uh, four, six, or eight pieces a certain number of pieces of that pie are for you. They are your portion. Well, this is saying that my soul knows full well even what my mind and my heart do not. That my true portion is God himself. Now think about that for a moment. It's not money. It's not treasure. Uh, it's not possessions or anything like that. It's a person. And not just any person, it is God himself. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. And because of that, because my soul realizes the worthlessness of everything in this life, in this world, and realizes that the only true worth is that which is in heaven, which is God, who loves me. I am who I am because of God, because he loves me. Therefore, my portion is him. It's to cling to him. It's to have him and enjoy him and take pleasure in him and glorify him forever and ever. The Lord is my portion. What a marvelous way very poetic way, but yet very theologically accurate way to put that. Forsake everything else. God is it. He is the pearl of the greatest worth, the hidden treasure, the lost coin, that which we should forsake everything else, sell everything else, just so that we might know 
gain and be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my portion, and my soul knows it full well. Now on to these last two verses, 25 and 26. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. It is good that he waits silently for the salvation of the Lord. The Lord is good. God created the heavens and the earth. God is good. At each stage of his creation, he pronounced something good, and therefore it was good. Nothing can be good except that God evaluates it and declares that it is good. So it doesn't matter what mankind labels as being good uh, or bad. It matters what God labels as good or bad. And so not only is the Lord good, that which he calls good is good. And here we see that the Lord is good, and this is an action, an activity, that uh, it's his position towards those, he is good towards those who wait for him. Wait for him. Not for anything else. And this kind of gets back to that verse earlier that his compassions, his loving kindnesses are new every morning before we do anything. So rather than doing something and getting out in front of God or jumping the gun or trying to force an issue, we wait for him. And those that wait upon him, the Lord is good and favorable towards them. And to though the person, as uh, verse 25 concludes, to the person, he is good to the person who seeks him doesn't seek anything else, doesn't seek treasures or fame or science or technology uh, for any kind of deliverance out of the trouble that they have or any kind of lasting hope. Seeking God, that is where true and lasting hope and deliverance come from. That's, that's the most important thing in all of life is to be reconciled to God, to be in his good favor, to be forgiven of our sin, and to become a member of his family. And that only happens by believing in and receiving the Lord Jesus Christ, following him as Lord. And when you seek him, and you don't seek other things, but you seek him, as we read in the Gospel of Matthew, Seek first his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And we don't seek him just so that we can get all those other things. That passage says, God knows what you need even before you do. Rather, your sole focus and your persistent continuing focus needs to be on seeking him. And the Lord will be good to you, to those who wait on him, and don't get out ahead, and don't go to the left or to the right, but wait on him and those who seek him and nothing else. The Lord is good to them. How wonderful, how marvelous is that? If we could all just fully comprehend that and live our lives according to that jewel of wisdom. And then verse 26 finishes by saying, it is good that he waits silently <laughs> for the salvation of the Lord. Well, we can be a very impatient, impertinent, and impetuous people. <laughs> and so we want it, and we want it now, and we want it our way. I mean, just take a look at some of the commercials through the years. You know, have it your way right away. You know, it's my money and I want it now, all these kinds of things. This is, this is the kind of people we are. But we need to wait on the Lord. We need to seek him. And while we do it, we need to do it silently. Don't talk. Don't, don't grumble and complain to those around you. 
uh, don't don't try to figure out uh, ways of doing things quicker or in a, in a different way uh, or in a different time. Wait on the Lord and do so silently. Seek him and his salvation is sure and certain. God cares for you. No matter what situation you're in, God cares for you. So humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in the proper time. And as you do that, as you humble yourself, and you wait patiently and continue to seek him, then that is the process of casting all your anxieties on him. Not keeping them for yourself, not, not being burdened or uh, making yourself desirous to, to do this thing or that thing in order to get through this situation or to make things happen the way you want and when you want it. You wait patiently, silently, casting all your anxieties on him, saying, God, you got this. You don't need my help because he cares for us. Well, this, what a great way to start out the new year. Uh, this is the first Bible Bites video for this year, and I think it's a great one. I think it will help us. If we can follow it, uh, maybe even we should write this down and put it on a sticky note uh, on our refrigerator, uh, on our bathroom mirror, put it in the car, and put, put one uh, on your computer screen at work. Put it everywhere and, and commit, if not the actual words, then the concepts. Commit the truth of this passage into your heart, into your soul, and try to live by it. And what a, what a fantastic year the year 2021 can be. So I pray that as you do this, that the Lord will keep you, that he'll bless you, and that he will give you his peace.